Welcome to topic 3 in which we're going to think about rotational motion. Often when you're thinking about molecules and how they behave it's useful to have a classical picture of what's going on. Now we always need to remember that it's, it's only a representation of what's going on and doesn't fully describe the quantum mechanics underlying um, all of molecular behaviour um, but it's still useful to give a sort of insight, a feeling for what's going on. So if we think about um, rotations of molecules in a classical view, from a classical viewpoint, we have a diatomic molecule which has um, a dipole moment, so one end is delta plus, one end is delta minus. Then if this molecule is rotating, it will point in different directions as a function of time. If we now then draw the dipole moment as a function of time, we can see that this also points in different directions. If we think about the vertical component of this dipole moment and plot this as a function of time, it looks something like this. So it increases to a maximum, decreases to zero, goes negative, and then comes back to zero. So it forms a wave. Now if we remember that um, light has an oscillating electric field um, which goes up and down, this oscillating electric field from light will interact with the oscillating vertical component of a dipole moment and this will allow them to interact which uh, allows spectroscopy to occur. That's a classical view. Let's now to a, go to a quantum mechanical view. So again we can think about a diatomic molecule rotating about a direction perpendicular to the bond, so something like this. This system possesses angular momentum, a bit like a particle in a ring, so we can actually represent it in a simpler way by thinking about a, a, an object moving around a fixed point. And this system can be described using a wave equation, so a wave function. And once we have the wave function, we can solve it um, using the Schrodinger. We can solve the Schrodinger equation and get energy levels and so on. If we think about a, a rotating system like this, so a particle and a ring, only some of the wave functions are actually meaningful. So, for a wave function, a particle and a ring wave function to be meaningful, the ends of the wave function must smoothly meet up. So it means that not all wave functions are allowed. So that we this means that we have only certain quantized energy levels. So when we solve the Schrodinger equation for a rotating system, it gives us this expression here for the energy. So in this expression we have h, which is the Planck's constant, and j, which is a rotational quantum number. So this is the first of many quantum numbers we'll see in this course. Else, otherwise, in this expression, we have Ej, which is the energy of the state with quantum number j, and I is the moment of inertia of the system. So I is given by mu r squared, so where um, mu is the reduced mass, and r is the, the length of the bond. The reduced mass is in kilograms, the bond length is in meters, so I, the moment of inertia, has units of kilograms meters squared. And the energy of these energy levels has, um, has units of joules. That's it for this topic. So there's some, now some homework, so various pages in Housecroft and Constable to read. There's an information box to read, and there's some worked examples for you to have a look through.